Good evening, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And welcome back to Ilal Life. My name is Faraz Patel. We'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Lukman Shadrach, for taking you through that first part of the show. Now, today, we have a very special guest, and we're dedicating these 24 minutes that we have for interviews because he's about to embark on a very bold challenge. So he's going to be starting this Thursday in Soweto, right? And for the next 10 days, he's going to be walking to Durban. Yes, Durban. So it's you know, close to around 600 kilometers from uh, the city of gold. And we brought him into studio because he's doing it for a very significant cause. He is walking for Palestine. He, of course, has been to Palestine, experienced it, and he's going to tell us his story and, of course, how he intends on embarking on this. Now, he's also known as Sheikh Abu Samra, and he's also known as Itani Rasa Lanavo. Itani, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and jazakallah so much for joining us. You're welcome, Salam. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks to you and the, and the viewers. No, it's an absolute <coughs> pleasure. Itani, let's talk about um, the walk. Uh, when you sat down, you know, what made you think, all right, it's time for me to maybe embark on this. You know, let me go ahead and do something that really can make an impact for the people of Palestine. Um, what, what really sparked this mm -hmm. is um, looking at what has been happening yes. post-COVID. Yes. COVID brought about a lot of changes mm. in our lifestyle and, 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 and livelihood mm. in general, even within the activism spaces. Yes. We have tend to relax a little bit. We have tend to, to take a backseat mm. in a way. So with the aggression that is taking place in, 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 in Gaza, it kind of raised something in me to say that something needs to happen. Mm. This mainly informed by what has been happening in Ukraine. Mm. When the war started in Ukraine, the whole world yes. started to speak mm. and the world was ready to support, the world was ready to bash Russia and ensure that it stops this mm. war. It has been happening for years. That is the war between Russia and Ukraine. Yes. Today we've got, it's been an, about 120 days that yes. uh, there, there's been an aggression. The number of children that have been killed in Gaza is almost mm. above the number of people that have been killed in Ukraine altogether. Yes. Soldiers, children and everyone. But... The world has been speaking about this lesser than, than, mm. uh, than, than, than the Ukraine cause. So I felt that it is something that maybe if we take it an extra mile and ensure that people speak about it and start mm. uh, uh, raising their, 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 their heads and, and, and ask why, why would mm. somebody commit to such a program. And I need to emphasize that before the, the walk, before the walk uh, takes place, mm. I had actually embarked on other uh, uh, daring activities. Okay. I did a, a bungee jump on the highest um, man-made uh, bridge, okay. which is Krasbo yes, uh, Bridge yes. in, in, in the west, on, on the border of Western Cape and Eastern Cape. Yes. That was the first time I did bungee jumping. I yes. never thought I would do it. Yes. Um, I did upsailing, I did uh, paragliding, yes. of, of which there are things that I never thought I would do, mm. but I did this to raise awareness and ensure that more and more people can hear about the Palestinian cause. Okay, now, <coughs> I, I, it sounds like you're a very adventurous guy. <laughs> Uh, what are some of the most daring stuff that you've done? You know, obviously, you're about to embark on something. I don't think I'll be able to do it. Give me a car. Yes, I'll be able to go ahead and drive. But what are some of the most adventurous things that you have actually embarked on uh, right before, of course, you made this decision? You said, of course, bungee jumping. Anything else? Um, the, one of the most daring things that I've done on more than one occasion mm -hmm. is spend a night with street dwellers. Okay whereby we'd invite um, other, other celebrities, politicians, mm, and yes. others say, come, come, let's spend a night with street dwellers mm. so that you can have the first-hand experience mm. of what is really happening. It's crossing over to a world that most have never imagined yes. themselves crossing into. Mm. Um, almost every South African have got an image of a street dweller, somebody who's at a traffic light, who's begging for something, we assist them but we don't have a full understanding of what it is that they're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, that is, that, 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 that is one of those things that I, I have done that I think were most daring. Mm. Other than that, it's um, with the Palestinians. Yes. Um, going into spaces that there are bullets that are being shot, there is tear mm. gas that is being fired, anything could happen, but we one had to enter into that space to ensure that, because just by being present mm. as an international, it would kind of deter the, the, the Israelis from, uh, from, from being extra aggressive. Mm. And it, it, it worked, but it was very daring. Yes. Yeah. Itani, talk to us, you visited Palestine. Uh, <coughs> talk to us about when you visited it, what was your experience? Because 
I think everyone knows the story of the links between apartheid South Africa and, of course, what is happening in Palestine. Talk to us about that. Um, on the comparison, mm. I feel that the comparison is not is not doing justice to the mm. to the whole situation. Yes, the you can see as a South African being there, you can really you realize that there is adjustment and improvements yes. to the apartheid system. Yes, they seem to have looked at the South Africa and see mm. what is it that the apartheid South Africa failed in mm. ensuring that this becomes a successful project and ensure that they they kind of improvise one yes. way or the other. Yes, but. Once you are there, mm. you would equally realize that this is even worse. Yes. Then because psychologically, the South African apartheid regime was clear. Mm. It was very clear. Everything was in black and white. Yes. You get to Hebron, for instance, in a, one of the only cities, is Hebron and Jerusalem, where settlers live with yes. Palestinians. There are no visible boundaries. Mm. Palestinians know that after a particular step, mm. I don't cross. Mm. After a particular tree, I do not cross. At this checkpoint, I have to start at mm. the soldier, but at the particular checkpoint, I can just cross. Yeah. So it, 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 it is to that extent, you don't know if tomorrow you're going to wake up in your house mm. or not. You don't know if you're going to be arrested. It's like you don't know if you're still going to be owning the house. You don't know if the house is going to be demolished by the following morning. You don't know if you yourself are going to wake up in that house, yes. either arrested or killed during the night. So it is things that we experience on a daily basis. But more than that, something that I always share about Palestinians is the love they have mm. for, 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 for everyone. Mm. You arrive amongst Palestinians, you would think they are pretending to try and buy your face, mm. especially on the first occasions, because um, the, the, the stories you hear from mm. outside are that they are terrorists mm. and all that. Once you arrive there, you would some way, somehow anticipate somebody would pretend mm. and pretend to be loving. But after some time, you realize that they genuinely love, they love yes. each other. Yes. I've only learned now that since COVID, Hebron, for one, mm. has a few street dwellers. Mm. All along, they have never been street dwellers yes. in Hebron. They always made sure that they try to help so much. You could see that people are on a brink. If it was in another country, they would be living on the street. But they try to, pre to prevent that at all costs, mm. ensuring that each and every morning there's breakfast mm. provided for everyone, irrespective mm. of any uh, conditions, lunch and, every and everything. There's donations and everything. So there is that genuine love that we experience from Palestinians. And it is something that made me realize how it became easy for the, for, for, for the Zionist project to, to prosper. It was easy for them to be welcome. One of the most common words you'll hear from Arabs is Alan wa Salan. Yes. It is very much common amongst Palestinians. Mm. I, 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 I would argue for days, but I've heard that word more from Palestinians mm. than most Arabs. Itani, um, as a black South African, I mean, it <coughs> hits hard, or hits home hard for you, doesn't it? That obviously black Africans suffered even more during the apartheid time. So, you could relate to them, couldn't you? That they, how, what they're experiencing and what black Africans experience is so intertwined. Very much so. Very much so. And um, looking at the Palestinians that are in Israel mm. are the ones that are experiencing this type of segregation yes. on a day-to-day -day basis. More high, well, the ones in the West Bank, it's more harsh because it's, the, it's mm. the martial law that is applied on them as compared to the civil law that is applied on the settlers. But you get into Israel, you realize that an, an, a, a particular image has been created which does not exist. Um, they would, most, Palest, most Palestinians in Israel would assume to be more freer than Palestinians in the West Bank. But mm. when you observe it, they are, they are, they are, they are, their freedoms have got this glass ceiling mm. that you can say that it's what... Um, like you are saying, the Africans, the black South Africans, mm -hmm. were the ones who experienced apartheid more than anyone. The people of Okala also experienced apartheid. Yes. But it was kind of shielded one way or the other. Yes. It is something that you can say about the Palestinians that are in Israel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of shielded. But when you go into the West Bank, that's when you witness it firsthand. Yes. There are Palestinians who can see their olive groves from their yards, mm -hmm. but it will take them seven kilometers to get to the, or to the yes. olive grove. That, that, that's what you call filling it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, yes, yes. Palestinians my age in Bethlehem, can see the roof of Al-Aqsa. Yes. Less than 2% of them have walked into... I've, I, I did a lot of walking from, from, from Bethlehem to, to Jerusalem. Yes. It's a walking distance. Yes. It's a distance from my, my mother's house to my grandmother's yes. house back in the villages. I, I, I did walk, but they can't. Mm. They cannot just cross a checkpoint. They cannot cross it. And it's something that you, are, you, you can feel, you can see on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's something that you know that you can dream. It even affects your dreams mm -hmm. because you can dream, but you know that your dreams are limited yeah. by this system which is right mm -hmm. in front of you. After the break, I continue my conversation with Itani. We're going to be talking about the walk 
And we're going to be asking, how is it going to be possible for him to achieve it? Well, he'll tell us more about it after the break. Where is it? Welcome back. I'm selling conversation with Itani, who is going to be daring the impossible, but he is going to achieve it for 10 days, starting on Thursday, walking from Soweto to Durban. Itani, I want to speak about the freedoms that we have as South Africans, because we have a beautiful constitution, a beautiful democracy. You've been to Palestine. You've experienced the harsh treatment. You see the apartheid system enforced on them. As a South African, how much do you treasure the freedoms we have in this country? It took the, the exp experiencing yeah. what Palestinians are, are, are experiencing mm. in order for me to even appreciate the freedoms that we have as a country. It not only, uh, coming back to the Palestinians, through these travels, you have this little experience of going through other countries outside of the mm. Palestinians themselves. That's when you experience that we have got so much freedoms. Mm. You hear we are a South Africa that is dominated by a lot of non-South Africans. Before they even speak to you, you mm. would realize that there must be something special about this mm. country that everybody wants to come to. And engaging them, you realize that, that yes. the, the, the amount of freedoms that we experience. Just comparing it to the Palestinians, there is a lot that we have achieved as a country that mm. we need to cherish and appreciate. Because others would really are ready to die mm. in order to achieve what, where, where, where we stand as a country. You know? Itani, let's talk about the walk. Right. Um, you start from Soweto. I, I don't even want to ask the hours that uh, you're going to want to maybe relax a little bit. Um, uh, mentally, how are you preparing for this? That's the first thing I want to ask you. We'll get to the physical part. Mentally, talk to us about that. Um, it, 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 I, I share this with everyone, mm -hmm. and most take it as a joke, but it's a fact. Yes. My grandfather walked from his village to Johannesburg on his first trip. That's Venda. Yes. Talking about in Venda, yes. and that's Limpopo, which is yes. also far. Just, yeah. just as far yeah. as it's a um, sixty kilometers difference between coming from here to Durban. Yes. So it's almost the same. Yes, distance. definitely. And it took him four and a half days. Yes. So that is the first source of encouragement. Yeah. That's the, if my grandfather could do it, yeah. I'm taller than him. Yeah. So <laughs> he's gonna take. Is, is he still alive? Well, he has passed on. Okay. He has passed on. May Allah, uh, may Allah grant him Janet, Inshallah. Yes. Amen. Um, so, so that that on yeah. its own end. The fact that there are Palestinians that have been walking from yeah. the north of Gaza, not just walking, mm. but ensuring that they are not seen by the Israeli yes. Defense Force, ensuring that, praying that they are not bombed, literally running away from explosions with fear, losing some people along the way. I've been following uh, two young men. One of them, his name is Salem. He's yes. from the north. He's from the Gaza city, the north of Gaza, Gaza yes. city. He is back at the Rafa gate as mm. of two days back. Mm. He is back at the Rafa Gate for the second time ever since the aggression. He moved from the north down south, moved halfway north mm. because the bombing said, come to them up uh, down south. Mm. So he has walked more than 400 kilometers calculating just around that very same sp small space, just moving from one corner to the other. Yeah. That kind of encouraged me. It gave me the courage and understanding that it is not something that can be difficult for me to achieve. So I've, I prepared myself to that extent. Mm. Mm -hmm. Physically, how you've prepared yourself, you look like you are a runner. You should have done marathon running, am I right? Now, that is where, uh, yeah. fun fact, I've never run. Is I it? started last uh, two months to keep okay. myself fit. Everybody that had not okay. been seeing me for the last six months is yeah. impressed. I right. have been doing, yesterday, I did 16 kilometers of running. Okay. So I've been keeping myself fit, I've been yeah. exercising, and South Africa is a, culture, it's a culturally Christian community yes. where uh, we're expected to enjoy the festivities in December and yes. all that. I don't remember myself holding a drumstick in December. Is it? Yes, I kept myself fit. Yeah. I didn't enjoy any desserts, yes. none yes. whatsoever. I kept myself focusing on this program yes. and ensuring that I'm fit because I knew that if I'm not fit and ready for this, mm. I may disappoint myself, disappoint that are supporting this campaign, disappoint Palestinians and disappoint the cause itself because yes. by doing this, we're sending a message. There are those that who are receiving these posters, they may not have communicated, but I'm mm. sure there are those that are planning to ensure that this does not become a mm. success. So let us, in, in ensuring that it becomes a success, mm. I had to be physically ready. Yes. Okay, Itani, I want to talk um, the distance close to 600 kilometers, right? How are you going to take breaks? How do you intend on taking breaks? 
First of all, what, what are you carrying? Are you carrying anything with you? Um, it will be a small bag with, okay. with water and snacks. Okay. There will be a car that will be accompanying me. Oh, there will be a car. Yes, Love yes, yes. yes, yes. Alhamdulillah, they, that, 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 that's the most fortunate okay. thing. There's going to be a support. Um, so it will be just snacks and, and, and stuff like that. So I have been taking 15-kilometer uh, walks. Right. My 15-kilometer walk would take me an hour, 20 minutes. Okay. So I'll be doing double that. Right. For one shift, take two-hour okay. break and then take another one. So if you look at the distances that I will be walking, yeah. it's about 40 kilometers in between each town. That is outside of KZN. KZN are going to be shorter mm. than that. Um, that's where we'll have more, more talks. Mm. So in between the cities that we'll be walking, for instance, from mm. Soweto to, to Fos Loras, yes. it is a 42 kilometer distance. Yes. So I'll be taking that first 20 kilometers, okay. take a two hour break, and then continue with the okay. walk again. Right. So there'll be those two hour breaks in between, yes. between the walks, and then overnight it will be a proper rest. I've been preparing myself for 12 to 15 kilometers on a daily basis. All right. Yeah. yeah I'm just imagining, you know, Itani, it's, I think this is going to be historical in, in, in so many ways, because I know of people who've actually run from city to city, but I mean, walking, you know, it takes a lot because it's, it's, the, it's the time, it's the distance that you have to cover. Now, obviously there's walking and then there's brisk walking. Are you going to balance between the two? No, it will be just okay. normal walking. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Itani, I mean, what motivates you? Uh, because we always, you know, everyone, every marathon runner I know, especially in this type of, uh, of endurance sport, likes to take inspiration from someone. Who have you taken inspiration from? I've taken inspiration from a non-sportsman. Okay. Well... My diva appears as a sportsman. Well, he did boxing. <laughs> His record may not be that great. I think I I know, not, yes. I, well, yes. I'm not a boxer, but yes. uh, between the two of us, yes. I have a better record than he is in yeah, boxing. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You've just knocked that out of the park. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But anyway, mm. I've taken inspiration from yes. him. Um, he leads a certain generation. Mm. He serves as a face for the generation of yes. people that spent 30 years in prison mm. and came back much better than they were. Yes. I've taken inspiration from them, led by Madiba, so I'll refer to Madiba, yes. in saying the inspiration I take from them is, is endurance yes. and patience. Yes. That life with patience and endurance, yes. it leads you somewhere. And from that, they say, they, 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 they say quote I just read just recently, it speaks of starting from scratch, that don't be afraid to start from scratch. Yes. Because in most cases, Especially if you have to start from scratch, you're actually not starting from scratch. You're yes. starting from experience. Definitely. You know, so, 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 so in, in doing whatever we're doing, mm. let us put the energy and ensure that we try. Mm. Let us not just mm. talk, but put action into yes. what we are doing. Yes. You see, so that, 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 that has inspired me from that generation. They did what they spoke, they spoke to. They didn't just talk and write, mm. but put action in, into what they are doing. So in what we are doing, let us put action into, into, in, 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 into our words. We are speaking as... Um, progressive as mm. peace lovers mm. as opposed to the others yes. whom we may not have to point out. But it seems like our opposition is more organized than us mm. in terms of action. They are ready to act. They are yes. always prepared to act mm. um, better than us. We always have to be found wanting, trying to organize ourselves. So in doing this, let us do this, but continue to be active and ensure that we are always ready for whatever that comes that we need to face. And that can only happen if we are physically, emotionally, and spiritually mm. ready. Itani, how proud do you feel as a South African? We saw two weeks ago, you know, our legal representatives going to the ICJ. Uh, South Africa, the citizens, we continue to have the protest. Uh, so much is being done here. And now you're about to embark on something uh, very different. How proud do you feel that you can play your part for the struggle of the Palestinian people? The Palestinians on the day of announcing the, uh, the, 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 the intention to take mm. Israel to the International Court of Justice, prepared a celebration in Ramallah in front of Nelson Mandela's yes, statue. Yes. That says a lot about us as yes, South Africans. Yes. The fact that, if I have to share just briefly, I was in the West Bank when the statue was brought into Palestine. Yeah. It took three months for it to reach Ramallah mm. from Tel Aviv. Yeah. The Israelis wanted it erected in Tel Aviv. They didn't want it to pass. They came up with all sorts of stories. Mm. We fought as South Africans to ensure that it is erected there. It is, it is very much impressive. It, 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 we are very proud as South Africans. Mm. Very much proud of the fact that it is us who know these sufferings yes. that are speaking up against it. Mm. As compared 
to the former victims of the Holocaust mm. who are the ones who are perpetrators of this kind of atrocities mm. on Palestine. It was not expected of the Jewish community to conduct themselves the manner in which they are doing mm. upon Palestinians, considering what they experienced a but few years ago. there are some good Jews. Uh, a lot, a lot, a I lot. Mean, some of them are fighting yes. for, obviously, the people. And there are those that are in the forefront yes, to, yes. Fight, to fight this. Yeah. And this is, for, to, 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 to speak for the Jewish community mm. with a smile, is that this is not the first time that we've seen Jew, a Jewish community, a certain section of mm. the Jewish community being in the forefront of a struggle. Mm. They have seen them in many, we saw them in South Africa, yes, in large numbers. Yeah. Yes, so we, 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 we know of this of, of, mm. of, of this group, but however we have got this the Zionist yes. agenda, if, yes. if one can point it yes. out in that particular Definitely, way, yeah. to say that we have got this Zionist agenda, which is driven by grandchildren, children, and some of the survivors of the Holocaust. Mm. Mm. Which you would ask yourself as to, isn't it that he who feels it knows it most? Yes, exactly. We as South Africans, it was expected of us, and that we are the ones leading this. It, it, it we were very proud. It's only one final question: How important is your story that's going to be told come Thursday and for those next 10 days? We have children that are losing their limbs on mm. a daily basis. We have um, women and elderly that are dying on a daily mm. basis. This story needs to be told on a daily basis mm. until something comes out of this, until Israel not only withdraw and agree to a ceasefire, but agree to go to a table and ensure that this ends. Because this is not an aggression that uh, the Hamas just decided to fire on the 7th of October. It is something that has started years ago. Mm. From, the, from 2003, uh, one can argue that people in Gaza have been captives themselves. Mm. They've been kept inside an open prison for so long. But from 2003, it has been even worse. Mm. They can't move. Even now, during this aggression, they are failing to get out of their... Mm. Of, of wherever they are. In, in meditating about this, you realize that Palestinians in developing Gaza as of today, they are forced to develop a Gaza that is more uh, accommodating to wheelchairs, that is more accommodating to uh, amputees and such, because they're going to have a large number thereof. Yes. There's going to be a massive impact in psychological uh, damage within this, that community, something that we've seen with the South African community, with the Irish community, and other communities that have experienced what, what, what Gazans are experiencing today. So mine is to say, let us bear that in mind, let us keep it in mind and ensure that we strive to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Yes. In us ensuring that this ends, we will ensure that it will never happen again. It happened in Bosnia, I was young. Yes. But I never thought that something of that nature would happen. Yes. What we are witnessing today is not far from what happened in Bosnia. Exactly. It can get worse. Mm -hmm. Let us be cautious as people. Inshallah. I mean, Itani, all the best on uh, your, your, your bold adventure. It's really a fantastic initiative that you are doing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you safely give you the strength, the courage to complete it. And inshallah, we'll see you at the finish line in Durban because you owe us a discussion then. So when you are done, we will definitely be having an interview and you'll be talking to us about how you achieved what many think is quite impossible. Itani, jazakallah so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure. Itani Rasalanavo. Of course, he will be starting on Thursday and it will end the following Sunday. Of course, inshallah, we hope to speak to him when he has completed his journey. Do stay tuned. I'll have you latest in news, finance, and sports up next.